my son, Freddy. You know, it's a fine feeling seeing your youngster sleeping peacefully like that. Of course, he should sleep peacefully after today. We're very proud of Freddy. Maybe I should tell you what happened. What a wreck. It's the second time it's happened in the same spot. You just have to be more careful, son. I know, Dad. I thought I had a time right this trip, but I guess that freight must have picked up speed on the downgrade. Well, you're the engineer. You have to figure these things out. Say, Dad, how would you like to become somebody on this railroad? Well, it's according to what kind of a job the uh, president of the railroad wants me to have. Well, I was thinking of putting you in charge of, uh, um, you know, Dan, buying the stuff the company needs. You mean uh, procurement? Is that the name for it? The department that buys things, that's it. Well, I was thinking of putting you in charge of per uh, buying. And uh, if I accept the position? Well, if we had a signal, It'd stop us from having wrecks, wouldn't it? Mm, yes, and? So, it would be your job to buy it. See, Dad? Right here is where we need the signal. Uh, as vice president of the Department of Procurement, uh, may I point out to the president of the railroad that anything we buy has to come out of the treasury. What treasury? The uh, railroad treasury. But this railroad ain't got no treasury. That's what I was afraid of. Don't say ain't. Sorry. But, Dad, what are we going to do? Well, with birthdays and allowance and things like that, in time, the president of the railroad may be able to uh, fatten up the treasury. I hate to disturb you two gentlemen, but Mom says she wants her two boys to come upstairs and get washed. Wait a minute, Pete. We're Dinner just... is served. Wait a minute, Pete. We're just We're in the middle. We're coming right along. Hello, Mom. Hello, Freddie. Don't do that, Mom. Let me. Don't do what? The dishes. I'll wash them for you. You will? Yeah. But, Freddie. They're already washed. Are you sure? Mm-hmm. Then I'll drive for you. Why all this sudden ambition? Just want to help, Mom. That's all. Well, that's nice, but why? Well, you see, Mom, I have to earn some money. Oh, I see. Well, I hope when I don't need money, don't I sometimes still? I know, but it seems to me you need money all the time. What's it for this time? Well, you see, when Dad and I run our trains, we always our have Our trains? Run... I thought those were your trains. Yeah, but I decided to put Dad in charge of procure... Per procurement? Yeah, procurement. And it didn't work out? No, not very well. You see, Dad wants the Treasury to pay for the signal. Is that what this is all about? Yeah, we well, see, when Dad and I run our trains, he gets his train in the way behind the furnace where I can't see it. And now you want to move the furnace. Oh, Mom, this is serious. We need a signal to stop us from having all the wrecks we're having. Well, if I know your father, he suggested that you might save your allowance. Yeah, you know Dad, all right. <laughs> Well, young man, can I help you? No. I want the signal, but... Mm, then I can help you. But I don't have enough money for the signal. Oh, well, now, that is a problem, isn't it? We have another signal. It looks just as nice. 
Except it doesn't work automatically. But it's much cheaper. Well, that wouldn't help. Because, you see, when my dad and I run our trains, he gets his freight in my way behind the furnace where I can't see it. Oh, I see. Well, I guess you'll just have to wait until you've saved up enough money. If I paid you 50 cents now and gave something every week? I'm afraid we couldn't. Unless your dad would be willing to open an account for you. Well, I guess I'll just have to wait. Thanks. You're welcome. Come in again. Yeah. Hello, Mom. Oh, hello, dear. What's the matter, Mom? Anything wrong? No, no, of course not. Just got a letter from Cousin Martha. Cousin Martha? Mm-hmm. She's going to Los Angeles and wants to know if it's all right for her to visit us for a week or so. Where'd she sleep? Well, with Emily away, she can have her room. I'd better call your father and tell him. Cousin Martha's never been here before, has she, Mom? Yes, she has, but that was before you were born. She's a distant cousin, and we don't see very much of her. Hello, Grandpa. May I speak to Carl, please? Mm-hmm, I'll wait. Is she nice? Is who nice? Cousin Martha. Oh, yes, of course she's nice. Hello. I really should apologize for having written on such short notice, but I didn't know that I'd be able to get away until that day. Don't give it another thought, Martha. We're so happy to have you here with us after all these years. We're only sorry you can't stay longer. Well, thank you. But I have to be in Los Angeles on the 17th for the opening of the trade show. Oh. And I'm sure that a week here will be quite enough to thoroughly disrupt your household. <laughs> this household has stood all kinds of rough weather, Martha. Oh, yes, well, it certainly has. <laughs> I must say, I didn't warn you. <laughs> By the way, Carl, I hope you don't mind, but I left your phone number with my office. Oh, of course. I thought this was supposed to be a vacation. Well, it's as much a vacation as I've had in ten years. And I wouldn't feel right if my office couldn't get in touch with me in case of an emergency. Well, what could happen in your business that would be called an emergency? Oh, Grandpa Fisher. I can see that you've never designed women's clothes. I'm afraid you're right. But if I did, I'm sure they wouldn't look as silly as a lot I've seen. Grandpa. Well, now, there's a man for you. Here I spend all of my life making women look attractive, and all he can say is that they look silly. Don't pay any attention to Grandpa Martha. He has a fit every time I put on a new hat. <laughs> I like your hats, Mom. Thank you, Freddie. Now, you see, it takes the younger generation to appreciate my efforts. Say, Cousin Martha, how would you like to see my trains after supper? Now, Freddie, I'm sure that Cousin Martha has other things to do. Not at all. But certainly, Freddie, I'd love to see your trains. I'll run down and get them started. Then I'll call you. Uh, just a minute, son. We haven't had devotions. Now, let me see. You were reading the Gospel according to St. John. And I think we're in the sixth chapter, Carl. That's right, Grandpa. Verse 47. Verily, verily, I say unto you, he that believeth on me hath everlasting life. I am that bread of life. What a wreck. Oh, what a shame. Sure is. Wish I had a signal for right here. Freddy? Yes, Mom? It's almost time to go to bed. Be right up, Mom. Like I was saying, Cousin Martha, I only had a signal for right here. Stop me from having all those wrecks I'm having. It would? Sure would. Only thing is, that kind of signal costs so much. Freddy! Freddie, I've told you before, we just don't do this kind of thing with guests. Why, Anna, what are you talking about? Freddie wasn't doing anything wrong. He was just showing me he the He knows what I mean. Don't you, Freddie? Come along, young man. Go to bed. Now I lay me down to sleep. I pray the Lord my soul to keep. If I should die before I wake, I pray the Lord my soul to take. And this I ask for Jesus' sake. Amen.
Has Martha gone to bed already? No, she went upstairs to get some snapshots she wants to show us. She ought to be down soon. Find the pictures, Martha? Hmm? Oh, no. I didn't. I must have mislaid them. Anything wrong, Martha? No, no, nothing at all. I know what's bothering Martha. It's the nightlife, Middleburg. She misses the hubbub, the noise, and the lights of the big city. No, it isn't that at all. I just wish I hadn't heard what I did a few moments ago. Well, I, I suppose it's none of my business, but as I was passing down the hall, I heard Freddie saying his prayers. And I was utterly shocked to hear him say that horribly morbid prayer. Morbid prayer? What prayer are you talking about? Well, the one about if I should die before I wake. Why, what's wrong with that? Well, don't you realize that he's only a child? And that such a morbid thought repeated night after night may lead to a dreadful neurosis. Martha. You're letting your imagination run away with you. There's nothing wrong about praying to God regarding death. Death is just as much part of life as birth, or day, or night. Carl's right, Martha. There's no reason for being afraid of death. Well, Freddie knows that. But don't you realize what it may... how it may affect his subconscious? Well, he's hardly had a chance to live yet. And... The very thought of death must be horrible. Not to Freddie it isn't. Or to anyone who has learned the things that Freddie has learned. Well, I don't see how the thought of death could be anything but horrible to a child his age. I'm afraid you don't understand, Martha. To Freddie, to the whole family for that matter, death is only the beginning. The beginning of a better life. We can't think of it as morbid or something to be afraid of. I'm sure Freddie doesn't have a single unhappy thought as he prays that prayer every night. And you needn't say anything more about it, Anna. I guess I shouldn't have mentioned it in the first place. Say, I, I, I wonder if I couldn't have put those snapshots in my purse. You ought to see the one Mr. Miller's got. Hello, oh, Hank. Who's Mr. Miller? Oh, a friend of my dad's. He's got one ten times bigger than that. And it's only got two rails, like real trains. It's terrific, man. I got a pretty big one in our basement. You have? Only I gotta get one of those. Well, why don't you get one? They got plenty of them in there. Here, I'll hold your apple. It's swell, Hank. And only 50 cents. Yeah. Anything else you need for your train? Well, I could use a lot of things, but I'll have to wait till I get more money. Well, next time you want something, you let me know, huh? So long. Bye, Hank. And thanks again. Wonderful. You know why I like it? It doesn't look like me. <laughs> Thanks so much, dear. Well, what's the matter, Martha? Don't you like it? Oh, yes, it's lovely. Well, what's the trouble? Anna, I'm somewhat concerned. Concerned about what, dear? Well, I would like to bring up 
this religious business again, but I've been here a few days, and it just rubs me the wrong way to see parents force their beliefs upon their children. But Freddie and Peter share our beliefs, Martha. That's only because you've never given them a chance to make up their own minds. To you, everything is settled, and you want to settle everything for them. You're right. For me, there are certain things that are settled. And those are the things I want to pass on to my children. But that shouldn't include your religious beliefs. And why not? Well, I feel that parents should confine their guidance to creating an open mind in their children. And then when they can think for themselves, and make their own decisions, then they can choose for themselves. Why should they have to wait to learn the truth? They have a right to know from the very beginning. But what may be all right for you may be all wrong for Freddy or Peter. But how can the truth ever be wrong? Oh, you insist that what you believe is the truth. But what about all these other people who don't agree with you and who say that they have the truth? All I can say, Martha, is I believe the Bible. To me, that's truth. I know some people don't agree, but it's in the Bible that I find my real happiness and where I know my children can find theirs. The way you say it, it sounds so right. And still, I know you're so wrong. But how can you say that? Oh, Anna, believe me, I wish I could agree with you. But I only hope that when the time comes for Freddie to make his own decisions, he'll be able to make them. This doesn't look quite right here. Hey, Hank. Yeah? Do you think you could get me another one of those signals, like the last one you got me? You got four bits? Not on me, but I can bring the 50 cents tomorrow. Well. Okay, you wait here. I'll be back in a jiffy. It's all right. You go right ahead. Yes, sir. Can I help you? Quick service. Well, don't you want it? No, I don't want it. Look, you told me to get you one, didn't you? Yeah, but I saw you swipe it. Pretty slick, huh? You shouldn't have, Hank. It ain't honest. Say, what's eating you anyway? You wanted it? Now you got it. You better take it back, Hank. Are you crazy? Look. You got it, you keep it. And don't forget, you owe me half. So well, anyway, there they are. Yes? Mr. Fisher? I'm Carl Fisher. My name's Claxton. I'm the new owner of the toy store, a few blocks from you. Oh, glad to know you. I'd like to talk to you about your son. I see. Well, won't you come in? Well, I, um... Uh, I don't want to intrude, it's just that I... No, uh, not at all. You're not intruding. Let me introduce you. Well, this is our house guest, Miss Fay, Mr. Thank Claxton, you. my wife. Thank I do. You. And my father, Mr. Claxton. Oh. Glad to know you, Mr. Claxton. Won't How you do you do, sit down? Sir? Thank you. Mr. Fisher, I don't want to take up too much of your time, but, uh... I must tell you of a most unusual experience I had today with your young son. Freddy? Yes. Has he done something wrong? Oh, quite the contrary. Your boy came into my store today and handed me two train signals. He told me that he bought them from another youngster. 
that he found out that the signals had been stolen from my shop. Stolen? It was quite refreshing to hear your boys say that it wouldn't be right for them to keep those signals. And that this was the reason why he was returning them. Oh, uh, I'd like to add something else. I happen to know how much he really wanted those signals. You see, for some time now, he's been coming into the store. He'd just stand there with eyes big as saucers, looking at the ones on display. I dare say, for the past few days, he must have wanted those signals more than anything else in the world. Yes, I'm sure he did. I'd like to compliment you on the fine job you've done in bringing up a boy who would do a thing like this. Thank you. I also feel the boy has something coming to him for being so honest, so I, uh... No, Mr. Claxton. He merely did what was right. I know, but if he hadn't, I'd be out two signals. So isn't it only right that I should share my small gain with him? I'd like to present him with one of the signals that he brought back. I'm sorry, Mr. Claxton. He's already gone to bed. I see. Well, will you kindly give him this in the morning with my compliments? It uh, really isn't necessary. I wish you would. Thank you. I know he'll be pleased. Well, good night. Very nice meeting you. Good night. Good night. Mr. Claxton, will you put another one of those aside for me? Freddie and I'll be in tomorrow to pick it up. Certainly. I know it'll make him very happy. Good night. Good night. Good night. Good night. Look here, Martha. There's no sense in spoiling the boy just because he did what he should have done in the first place. Now, you hush, Grandpa. <laughs> Anna? I'm beginning to understand what you meant the other night. I don't think you'll ever have to worry about your children making their own decisions. Of course, if Freddie had been listening this evening, he'd have been very surprised at some of the things that were said about him. To his way of thinking, there was nothing else he could do. He knew what was right, and that settled it. Yes, it's a wonderful feeling to know that you've given your child a Christian training. What about you parents out there? Of course, there are lots of things you can do for your children. But nothing is more important than bringing them to faith in Jesus as their savior. That's what Anna and I have tried to do with little Freddie. And that's what we hope you parents are doing for that little boy and girl of yours.